everyone, I'm Alicia from Adventures of Stitching and I'm so happy to be back with you today. It's been about three weeks since my last video, so we're doing good. We're on a normal schedule again, so I feel good about that, what I have to show you. Um, I'm so ready for Christmas. Here's my tree and I might as well just kick this right off. I will be bending over to grab things a lot because I'm kind of on a mini chair. <laughs> But um, that way you get to see the best angle of the tree. It's not about me today, it's about my tree. Um, so the other day I just threw this together and the artist that I am, I even put the year on it. But here's my little ornament. <laughs> I don't know, the glare. It's a little bit iridescent. I actually bought a set of 24, so I'm good for 23 more years. <laughs> um, but this has a whole bunch of there you go. Whole bunch of the threads of every project I worked on. It's funny how it looks like a big mess, but um, someone asked me the other day, I think it was Angie, she's like, do you know what projects those go to? And I was like, well, all the browns go to one particular project, which I will be showing you today for the first time since my mid-year whip parade, which will actually also be um, I'm switching to just doing one whip parade a year, and that's going to be on my um, my Flossiversary. So in June, you will get my next whip parade. So don't look for one for me for the end of the year, because I'm chilling out on that. Um, I don't know what I was saying. Oh, my map. That's my project that all the browns and tans come from, and then all the bright colors those probably go to my grand library, but there's a bunch of other ones that probably are mixed in there. I have um, some haul. I'll show that at the end of my whips. And then after that, I will share some of my 2024 plans. So stick around if you want that, leave if you don't. So um, we'll just get started. Grab my notebook. And the first project I wanna show is actually um, has a story attached, so I might as well get that out of the way. This is a gift for my brother, <laughs> and I started it in 2021. And it is the Middle Earth map from Lord of the Rings. And just recently, my brother randomly, out of the blue, out of nowhere, guys, texted me and said, hey, I wanna start cross-stitching. Where do I find patterns? How do I do this? Like, I was sending little one minute clips of how to's and what to look for, what not to look for. And um, he went on Etsy and he kept sending me all these patterns. And I was like, dude, slow down. You don't even know if you like it yet. Guys, he sent me the pattern that I am doing for him. I had a heart attack. <laughs> I was sitting there, I was just laughing my head off and freaking out because I was like, no, you can't do that one. Oh, but I can't tell you. So I was like playing it cool. I was talking to everybody I knew. I was like, how do I do this? How do I play this out? So I guided him to a small project. I might try to find pictures to help show you guys, but he wanted to do like a, a Japanese mountain landscape and he did find one um, and he's doing great with that. I might even put progress pictures of that because he sent me a couple recently. <clears throat> so now he knows he likes it and the last time I saw him was when we went Christmas tree shopping at the tree farm and he goes, by the way, I'm so excited. I can't wait to start on the Lord of the Rings map. Guys, like same designer. I didn't point him in this direction at all. I was trying to get him away from that. So I was talking to my mom and she said, you need to tell him, you need to tell him you're doing that because you've been doing that for a couple years. And if he starts it, your project goes out the window. So next thing I know, I, I said, well, I was planning on giving it to him for his birthday, his birthday um, in a couple years. And <clears throat> his birthday this year is on the 18th. Well, it's on the 18th every year, but I want to give this to him this year. And to do so, I wanted it to at least look like I got somewhere with it. 
Um, so I will be gifting this to him in a few days and I got the first page row finished. So at least it'll give him an idea. <clears throat> now I washed it and the stain, there's a couple stains that still won't come out. Um, I don't really care about that. I just wanted to make sure it looked as good as it could. So here we go. This is 19.00% complete guys. Um, I do have some page lines, but I know when I was working with it today to iron it, <clears throat> I was sort of stretching it out a little. And once I frame it, all those lines will go away. But in the future, I'm going to be stitching and blending between the, the pages. So, the, so there won't be lines at all, but doesn't this look cool? So there's like, I'm trying to think if it's four more rows of pages. They're like 11 pages across. This is on 27 count Linda. I'm stitching this two over one tent stitch. And since you've last seen it, I have stitched 5% of the whole project. So I went from 14% to 19%. And I think I was like right in here since you last saw it. Just in the last week, I did a page and a half kind of because that last page is like this right here and I got to do the compass love that oh that was so much fun so I mean I've been waiting to do this since I started the pattern so there you go guys this is one that I was sort of having to hide because if he was getting into cross stitching he's probably going to find my channel at some point maybe and I couldn't keep sharing this if I wasn't going to tell him, but now that I'm telling him, I can take it back, work on it, and even give him updates as we go. So this could actually end up turning out better, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. It'll be the gift that keeps on giving. So um, I'm excited. I, I'm going to try to get pictures, if not video. Um, I'm hoping one or the other I'll get while I give it to him on Monday. So that's sort of the highlight of this video for me. But um, so the stats on that, I am at 56,552 stitches out of 297,700. Um, I've done 16,352 stitches since you guys saw it from my whip parade in August. So <laughs> that's a lot of stitching. Um, and a lot of that was just in November. I really went to town. I actually think I was monogamous for a while, um, which is not normal these days for me. But yeah, so then um, I'm actually going to work through my, my whips of the most recently worked on and then work my way back. So yesterday was Oldest Whip Wednesday and I didn't make a post yet um, about it because I was so tired, but it, it was my Cinderella and Carla from Stitch Me Sane, she selected this as my December Wheel of Stitches goal and I spun six days. So um, day one of the goal, I did right here this block and I did back stitching. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see the back stitching because um, I can't see it. <laughs> Let's see, We I did some of the dark gray in here. They're just like little shadows of branches. And then there's some dark brown. You really can't see that. I don't even know why I stitched that if you can't see it. <laughs> Maybe you guys can, I cannot see it. Um, so what these are is two little birds. Um, and then there's like a roof of something here. Is it here? Yeah. And I, I backstitched that. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking I might backstitch as I go. I still need to do a little bit of Fairy Godmother. She's got her wand here and um, a little face to do. And I'm going to do that today. Um, but yeah, so thank you, Carla. I know you wanted to see more progress on this. And I do too. Um, since it's my oldest whip from 2017, I need to get on it. Um, I don't have numbers for this, except it's all from the kit, Disney Dreams, Thomas Kincaid. It's out of print, kind of hard to find, but 
This one is actually one of the easiest to find of all of them for about $100. So if you want one, save up maybe or ask for Christmas or something or your birthday, but um, I have seen them a little under 100 too. So keep your eyes peeled or do what Carla did and just find a whole bunch of them. I don't even know how she did that, if that was Facebook or a yard sale or what, but that was a good find. Um, okay, so the next one is churches or a church for all seasons. We call them churches, call it churches. It's from, I even looked up how to say, like to pronounce her last name, Nikki Bome. I think that's what Wikipedia, the voice thing said. So I'm just gonna go with that and I hope it's right. It's probably German, I don't know. Um, but anyways, that's from um, Charting Creations. We started this, a few of us, um, for Angie's birthday, 2023. And here we are. This was a, there's a hanging thread. This was a Wheel of Stitches goal I believe, I didn't write this down, but I believe it was the goal Angie had for me. And it took me all month to the last day <laughs> to get them in, but I made it to the winter section and I've shared this on Instagram already, but I am doing this by the season I'm living in. So over here, spring, then you got summer and fall. And actually, let me fold this. This right here is kind of the bridge on the pattern. So it's sort of fall and winter. So I kind of went a little farther, but I just carried the whole color through until my floss ran out. Um, I want to work on this a lot more um, in the winter months because I love how spring has a really definite corner here. I kind of want winter to match that and even I think next year what I want to do is go up the sides and go across the top and then as the years go I can just like go crazy with it maybe uh, maybe outline each section like each church maybe I don't know but this is this one's been fun and I, I guess it's a few of you guys favorite so Hopefully I'll get on that some more. That's on 28 count, two over one tenth stitch, uh, easy guide fabric. This one I actually worked on uh, just a few days ago. I worked on it for three days and I was actually surprised that um, I forgot how far I went on this, but this is Cozy Winter Evening Mini. Um, it's from Heaven and Earth Designs and it's by Oleana Babenko. This is on 27 count Linda, two over one tenth stitch. And I'm doing this extreme cross country. Look at that. And what you see here, this is what I did. This is what I worked on. So it's in the color 814. Some of you probably know that really well. It's like a wine color. And this, I added 1,754 stitches and I actually haven't worked on this since June. So it needed some love. But um, I just went to town on this. I did this like three days and I just stitched. Partly because life has been a little bit hectic so um, it's been nice to just have one color to focus on. And let me tell you guys, if you want to do extreme cross country, that first color is an uphill battle. But once it's in, oh my goodness, is this fun. Like, cause you're just kind of going by your anchor color and then you're, you're filling in. It's so magical. Like there's this outline of the star that wasn't there before. And then like the tree, there's a little bit of this 814 in these uh, glowy ornament lights. 
And then I just did, since I just did this, you can kind of see the top of her head, like her hairline there. So cool. Um, I might bring this out some more since it's Christmas. This is one of my only, yeah, one of my only Christmas projects. Church just has a Christmas scene, but I, I guess it's technically winter. Um, so, sorry, all my stats are in a big jumble. Um, I'm at 13,662 stitches out of 79,300. I'm at 17.23% complete on that. And then the next project, I only worked on this once since you guys saw it last, so it's not gonna be too stunning, <laughs> but um, I did get a good bit done. This one I'm actually converting onto a diagonal. This is God Shed His Grace by Abraham Hunter from Artisy, and it's the medium pattern version, so it's not like the huge one or the small. Um, it's on 25 count easy guide to over one tenth stitch. And I did 794 stitches um, just this last Sunday. So it was like the first time in a month. I'm at 12,749 stitches out of 135,000. 9.44% complete. And I would love to get this to 10% by the end of the year. And it looks like I could probably make that. So what I worked in um, was in these colors and I filled in some of the pale I guess you could call them ninja stitches, but they were kind of scattered throughout, so it was more confetti, I guess. Um, so, I did also got a page finish right here. That's a page finish. Um, so, so far I have two page finishes, and then these are all partials. So, I love this. Look at the light there. Oh, it's like raining back in the distance. Oh, it's so cool. Um, so yeah, it's very pretty, very fun. I started that, um, new, that was my new year, new start this year. So on January 1st, it's going to be one year old. So I would just love to get that to 10%. I mean, it sounds so sad that if I keep that up, it's not going to be finished for 10 years, but maybe as I finish others, I can kind of bump that one up to work on it more often and get it done sooner, but we'll see. I don't know. Um, the next one, really, it's just fun to show. I only did this for one day since you've seen it and it was to finish a goal, I think. I don't even have details about that right now. Um, but it's my Grand Library Super Size Max Color by Amy Stewart from Heaven and Earth Designs. And I worked on this for 261 more stitches. I'm at 1.08% complete. And I think I finished this column and just kind of did filled in my hanging threads here. Um, so the next time I work on this, I'll, I'll be doing a lot of new installs. And I'm doing this Royal Rose by Paige. And the vote was once this page is finished, I work down. So I gridded that to be ready. This is on 32 count Lugana. I think it's cream. Um, one over one tent stitch and mostly CXC threads. There's some DMC, but it's 90% CXC. Look at that, it's look, looking really good. That is, um, let's see, I have 7,718 stitches done out of 715, 284 stitches. And I start restarted this in August, but I started it originally. Uh, June of last year, 2022. Um, the next project and the last one, I believe, yep, last one. This one I've been focusing on almost as heavily, almost. Uh-oh. That had my needle on it. So the needle's down here somewhere. You're not a floss tuber unless you lose a needle. I'll look for it later. Um, this is my temperature tree from Stitch and Mommy on Etsy. I love how it's turning out. It's a bit tedious to complete though, so um, I may not be doing another one 
too much too often <laughs> um, this is a 18 count white Ada and since you last saw it I finished July I did August and September I'm on the October branch next time I pull it out I want this to be a 2023 finish um, we'll see if we get there I think today I want to work on this and Cinderella um, I'm not working on my map until I get it back for my brother's birthday because I like the clean page finish line there so um, I don't have stats on this just you can kind of see the progress lots of Ohio temperamental mood changes mood swings here like um actually it was a little better this summer but like you you can tell it went back and forth and back and forth like there's yellow here lots of hot colors and then back to yellow and then in September it really fluctuated I don't think there's a leaf all the colors or all the days are different colors, just intermixed, sprinkled through. So I think I'm putting that off a little because it's a little more work. Um, I sound lazy. <laughs> so those are all my whips, all the progress that I have made since, I guess three weeks ago. That was my three weeks worth of progress and most of it was just in the last week because there was a week there. My, sorry, my hair is bothering me. Uh, there was a week there where I didn't really stitch much. I wasn't feeling good. Lots of things going on. Um, not bad things, just a lot of family are having birthdays right now. And that goes all the way through January. I think half of our family on both sides has a birthday in January or December. So I'm like, oh. <laughs> but it's fun. Um, so if that's all that you were here for, it was fun fun hanging out with you and um, I will move on to haul and if you don't want that you can just skip over and I'll, I will cover some of my 2023 plans so haul is interesting this time um, what do I start on I'll start on this one I actually did not make a note of who this was on Instagram, but she's doing a D stash on Instagram and I just kind of went a little bit crazy. So the first thing that I saw was the first thing that I wanted. And she had this set of project bags. Like this is a little notions bag. It's got a little scissor zipper pull. So cute. Um, I might put my sock knitting in this actually, but like, look how cute. And then the, um, the inside fabric is just adorable. I don't think you can see it. You'll probably see it better here. Um, but she was super sweet and we got to chatting and she's like, if there's anything else. Um, so I added on a pattern at the end. She was just so nice. So there's your inside fabric. I don't know what I'm going to put in this yet because it's just so pretty. And I feel like my projects aren't pretty. <laughs> cute or adventuresome or fun we'll have to think on this one let me know actually let me know what you want me to put in that project bag and if there's like a winner then I'll I'll go with that so the next thing I got was this little house needleworks pattern called spot of coffee and I'm gonna try to do this with the least amount of glare I don't think you can see that very well. Nope. It's so little, it's hard to zoom in. Yeah. It says, coffee by the candle's light warms a heart into the night. And I just thought that was so cute. And plus I love coffee. Um, the next one, I think this was the one that I threw in at the end. This is by It's So Emma. It's called Starlit Snowflake. And what got me with this one is it reminded me of Valentine's Day and that's my birthday. So I want to stitch this and it's a pretty quick stitch. Um, it doesn't say 
oh, it's 103 stitches wide by 103 stitches high. So, you know, not full coverage. It's gonna go really quick because I'm a full coverage girl. So <laughs> it's gonna be a lot quicker than I think. And then um, this one, I, I kind of hemmed and hawed over a little bit. And then I realized it's all the seasons and I used to be obsessed with carousel horses. This is Teresa Wentzler's carousel horses for all seasons. So this is all four seasons in it. And my bedroom as a teenager, guys, a teenager were carousel horses. And um, I went with pastel colors. So it all worked out and I had um, a, an aunt she used to buy me a carousel horse, like a really, really cool. Sometimes there were music boxes, but she, for, I don't know if it was my birthday or for Christmas, but every year she would get me one. So I had a shelf of like 10 of them lined up. And um, so, yeah, this one is, I think I figured out summer. Yes, summer's on the front and then winter, spring and fall so I don't know when I'll get to these but I would like to stitch them I've never done a Teresa Wensler oh, it's so cute so yep that's all I got from her I think it's Holly something I'll put it I'll put it down at the bottom and then the other thing is this is like so cool um Stephanie from the on point stitcher on both Instagram and floss tube um, she was making project bags and she made two as giveaways and one of them she said was a fluke and it ended up the pattern was upside down and I was like that's the one I love <laughs> and I guess her daughter was like that too but um, so I entered to win this bag and I won it so she was super excited too she's like I can't believe you got that Alicia so you know like how cute so yeah the the it's called the upside down bag <laughs> i love that so it's she wanted it to go like this and there was a regular one that did get um i can't remember who it was that won but won the the right side up but i like it like this and i think her daughter said if you have it down by your feet and you look at it they'll all be looking up at you and then the inside is this really pretty red polka dot it's so cute. So she also included a note, um, a little card, and then this um, this donut needle minder. So cute. So I told her I'm gonna put my grand library in this. It'll be in this bag for life because she adopted my original grand library. Um, and if you've been with us, either one of us, for the last few months, you would probably already know that and be tired of us talking about it. <laughs> So thank you, Steph, so much. I feel like I got a Christmas present from you. So um, that was so exciting. And then the next thing, this is what I bought for myself. This is, this is me. Um, I got, I'm going to start, I'm gonna try to find that pattern. I'm gonna start a Pride and Prejudice piece with um, Sarah from Peace, Love and Stitches. And I might, I might have done my math wrong. I bought a fat half of this and I'm wondering if I got it mixed up. I don't know, I'll have to go do it, um, do all that thinking over again. But this is a half yard of 18 count Jade Ada and I believe it's Picture This Plus. And you know what? That's pretty close. That's basically what it looks like. It could be a little bluer because it's kind of a teal, like a summery aqua. There you go, that's it. So that's gonna be really pretty. Um, I originally wanted to do a pink for the floss. It's gonna be like a monochromatic thing, but I'm leaning towards purple. So um, again, give me your ideas of what colors you think would look great on this and go along with Pride and Prejudice because I kind of want to sort of stick with a period type Regency look, so maybe softer. But I, I know I was also looking at some um, editions of book covers and uh, some of those aren't soft. Some of them are pretty bold, like there's a mustard and a black thing. So um, I just love this. This turned out great. 
And then the other thing I got was this pale pink 20 count quarter yard of blush Ada. And it's just a baby pink and I don't think you'll be able to tell. Unless I have something white. Let's see. That's white. There you go. It's just like a baby pink. And I'm thinking of using this for little women. My, my pattern that I just bought, I think I shared in my last video. Um, but if not, I just realized that this would look great on that. So I don't know. I'm pretty sure this is for little women though. So that's all my haul. I guess this is semi haul. I got um, me and Leanne from Small Town Stitches. It's actually her idea. But um, on Amazon, we got these little four by six albums and I have every whip in here on a card. So I even tried to make it, yes, I did it by start date. So I've got Cinderella on here with all of its stats. And I went all the way through and I was joking because I said, all right guys, I only have three pages left, so I only have room for three more whips, that's it. Um, but it came with two albums. <laughs> so shh, I'm not starting enough whips to have two of these though, so um, maybe that'll keep some self-control in. But if you guys wanna do this, if you feel like you can't keep track of your whips, like you have too many like me, I'm gonna try to leave a link in my description box so you can find these. They were um, $10 or something and you get two of them. So you could use one for pictures or um, you could even have, like if you are a floss tuber, you could even have a picture of each whip cover photo in here if you want. It's an idea. Um, so that's all my haul. Um, I did want to share a, probably my first finish my first FFO of my life. I don't even know how old I was, but you guys know um, if you've been here from the beginning, I started cross stitching when I was like eight maybe. Um, my grandma had a Precious Moments booklet and I did one from that and I loved it so much. I don't know why I left it, but here is my FFO. And I had, I don't think I even, really finished it because I feel like there should be back stitching in here and I was like I don't want to do that <laughs> I'm done and then I gave it to my mom and my mom put it in this frame and she had it in her house for years and then just the um few years ago she gave it to me and I forgot about it um and just realized I should show it because it's my cross stitch that I finished when I was like eight so how cute is that? I don't know which booklet this came out of. Um, so if you wanted to stitch it, you might have to do a little bit of a hunt. But I was so little when I did this. And I did my exes. What? I did my exes the opposite of how I do them now. How did that happen? I don't understand that. Oh well, that's funny. Um, okay, so for plans for 2024, so segue out of all of the show and tell stuff, we're getting into the boring nitty gritty numbers and everything that I probably will not follow through with. Um, but first off, <sighs> I want to get my map as far as I possibly can, so it's going to be a priority. I have three projects that are going to be priority one. Um, that is my map right here. This is my new 2024 planner, by the way. I should show you the cover. I just found it at Half Price Books. I was very happy and cute, um, and it was cheap. Um, okay, so. My map, originally when I made this goal, I wanted it done in three years. So 2026, I believe, would be the slot for that. I want to bump that up 
but I'm not sure if it's possible. So three years is still probably the realistic goal, but I would love to have a 2025 finish. So that's gonna ramp up the stitching there. Um, my library, and I have this um, broken down. Let me show you here. I have the plan in black, and then I've highlighted the stitches I need per day average um, and per week average and per month because that's going to be easier for me to track in case I skip a day. I'll be like, okay, um, one day at the end of the week I need to just slam out a thousand stitches or whatever and get that one back up to date. Or in a month, this is like my, you know, plan C <laughs> is, oops, it's the last week of the month. You need to stitch a lot on this. Um, so hopefully that's going to work. But I've got map for 230 stitches a day, which it goes really quickly. I would say I could probably do that in 15 or 20 minutes. Um, it, it's like, it only has 20 some colors in the whole pattern. So to have it in a page, it's like 230 stitches of one color, you're done. So um, that's my three year number though. So this would probably go up to 400 a day if I want it finished in 2025. So I'll have to, you know, edit and rewrite in some options for numbers. The next one is my library. That is a 10 year finish plan counting this year as the first year it started. Um, because technically I'm start, I did start over. So, um, that would have me finishing it in 2033 and that's 209 stitches a day. Now, when I do, did this, this map, it was a few weeks ago and I haven't touched library. So I might have to adjust that too. It might be more like 215 a day. Um, and then tiger, my mini blue eyed tiger. It's at 50% right now, and um, I would love to have that finished in the middle of next year. So I kind of want that one out of the way as soon as possible. Um, if I set it to finish it in, I think it was June, it's 50 stitches a day. So again, not won't take very long. The library is the one that could take some time. And so if I focus on these three projects, um, and get those goals out of the way, then it'll leave me with, oh, if I have some flex time, let's throw in these other sideline goals. That brings me to priority number two goals. And these, I don't have in this notebook yet. Uh, hang on. I didn't prepare 100%. I did pretty well though. Um, Yeah, here we go. My priority two projects. Um, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> Sorry, I just remembered that I did, I did put this in here and I actually already filled in my January um, to-do list. So now it's in this one. Okay, so these are, <laughs> these are priority one and two. Um, so I already told you about the, the daily priority three ones. And then the priority two projects are ones where I only need a, cert, a, a, a couple hundred stitches for that month, every month. So Hummingbird, um, I, I need to do 300 a month. Churches, 400 a month. Farm Stand, 350. Now that's probably going to change because I have added on other goals I will share in a minute. Um, Shire, Anne of Green Gables, my Mickey and Minnie, uh, the, the Sweetheart Cove, Cozy Winter Evening, The Last Supper, Simple Pleasures, and Cinderella. The, uh, well, and Nativity and Grace, but those are higher. Those are all 500 stitches or less that I want done monthly. So what I decided to do was each week, and since I've already made out January, I will show you. Each week I've got my priority um, 
my priority projects and the stitch count I need. And I have added in, okay, it looks like I changed this a little bit. Tiger gets one day a week, 350 stitches, 450 stitches a day. Um, so I've designated days to get there by the end of the week. And I have picked three or four of my priority two whips to work on in this week. Um, and then my daily ones. So then next, the next week, I pick three or four others of my priority two. And priority three, so ones are for a finish, a, a definite finish date has been set for them. Two is I want some good steady progress. Three, don't really care that much about an end goal yet. I want them finished, but I don't really care about when that happens. They're not going to be above the ones that I just want to start keep plugging along at, whether they're larger or um, I'm doing them with buddies or whatever. The priority three are the ones that are literally just for the fun of it right now. So we've got my Pain Free Craft Sal, super fun to do, would love to see a finish, but it is more fun to work on and think about working on than think about finishing and looking at it afterwards. So that's going to be a, a three. Lady of the Mist from Mirabilia. Cinderella, Gilmore Girls is actually going to be slated for a finish. I changed that. Um, One Nation Under God, Mirabilia T, which me and Angie renamed that to Friendship, and My Temperature Tree, which the Temperature Tree will also be a finish. Um, so clearly it's my paper charts that don't have goals. <laughs> um, so that kind of gives you an idea. I did make a little bit of a graph here um, to figure out if my scheduling would work for daily and um, slating a project here and there every month to get the monthly stitch goal. Um, so that did work and that led me to plugging that in in my actual planner. Um, the last thing I want to share um, that's at the end of this one is me and my girls, Rainy from Rainy Day Reads, Leanne from Small Town Stitches, and Angie from Angie Slowly Crafts, we were all talking once and we were like, you know, we really need to get projects to 5%. For some reason, um, some of these are just not getting the progress they need. So we came up with the hashtag 5% by 25. And we have a list, all, I, all four of us have a list uh, about the same length that doesn't look too great right now. <laughs> um, there's some 1% and almost 1% and we would love to get those all to 5% by the end of the year. But, here's the big but. Um, we're not putting pressure on getting all of them to 5%. I would love to just see as many as possible get done, but like my grand library is in there and 5% on that is a, probably a small finish for another hate. <laughs> um, so I will share my list and I might put pictures up to help you guys get visuals, but my 5% by 25 is my grand library. 5% um, for that is about 36,000 stitches. I need to stitch 28,000 stitches to get there. Um, if I stay on task with my other goal I have for it, that will be easy peasy and probably tripled. Um, but we'll see because I like to break rules. <laughs> I like to make rules and I like to break my own rules. Um, my second one is Church for All Seasons. It, um, to get 5% in on it, I'm not saying that right. 5% of that project is 12,400 stitches. And for me to reach 5% on it, I need to stitch 6,200. Um, Hummingbird, I just started it, but I would love to get it 
um, moving to 2000 stitches is a 5% complete on that and I need 1700 stitches. Farm stand, it's <laughs> another big one. 5% uh, of that project is 20,000 and I need 18,500. I'm not even at 1% on that yet. And then nativity, mine is let us adore him and it's the regular size so it's um 250,000 stitches um so 14,600 is it's five percent and i need 10,500 that number will change because i will be working on that a lot in december so i'm gonna be able to lower that goal um by next year and then my mini evening by Leonid Alfermov is um, 4,200 and I need 3,500. Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci is a, like it's a story keep. It's not very big. Um, 2,000 is it's 5% and I need 650. So some of these are actually a lot, um, a lot lower. So hang on, someone's at the door. I'm back. So that is all of my um, 2024 plans. Let me get my notebooks again to make sure I did not miss anything. Um, I covered what I wanted to finish. And then I have a, I wanna do minimal new starts so nobody come at me next year. Sorry. <laughs> um, I would love to start so many things with so many of you, but I, I really need to make progress and so I have I have probably room for four new starts next year because um, they're already kind of in the works. So what I wanna do is new year, new start, and then just try to space them out. I've got one that I need to do in February or March. Um, and then I just, I need to hold off. <laughs> Cause right now a new start sounds so fun. I need to wait till January so I can get more of this progress done. I need that map out of my way and I'm only 19% in and I started it two years ago. So yeah, I'm a little bit overwhelmed. I'm probably more of a progress stitcher than a process stitcher, but I do like variety. So the, I'm at war with myself a lot, but um, I think having plans and goals and working towards them is going to help me feel like my head is still connected. <laughs> um, but I really hope you guys had fun. I hope it wasn't too boring and um, you were just stitching and hanging out with me. Um, I want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and hope some of you get a white Christmas. I won't, I don't think that's in our forecast, um, but anything's possible. Um, but it looks like it's going to be kind of warm. Uh, we haven't really had any snow yet this year in Ohio, um, central Ohio, but what can you do? Um, this is probably the last time you'll see me this year too. So happy new year, a happy 2024. I can't believe we're already there. Uh, we're literally living in the future right now. And also the next time you see me, I will probably be in Florida. So my surroundings will change yet again. Uh, but I'm excited for that and um, yeah, have a great day and stitch like the wind.